Hi, this is Steve Dace, and welcome to SteveDace.com. Today you're going to look at the first in a nine-part series taking a look at what we here at SteveDace.com think are the biggest obstacles the top candidates in the 2012 Iowa caucuses face if they're going to emerge victorious on February 6, 2012 in the first in the nation caucuses. Now a lot of times campaigns are won not necessarily by accentuating your strengths, but by mitigating or overcoming your weaknesses. And because we live, unfortunately, this side of heaven, every one of these candidates, just like every one of us, has flaws. And in some cases, they have fatal flaws that they have to overcome. Luckily, their opponents aren't perfect. So they also have fatal flaws that they have to overcome. So for the next nine days, we're going to take a look at what we believe are the top nine most likely candidates to be on the ballot in either the Iowa straw poll or the 2012 Iowa caucuses. And we're going to take a look at their weaknesses here on SteveDace.com. And we're only going to take a look at their weaknesses in terms of how they win the Iowa caucuses. What happens beyond these borders? Well, you know, that's, as Barack Obama likes to say, that's above our pay grade. We're only going to look at how to win the Iowa caucuses, or in the cases of each of these nine candidates, what's standing in the way of them winning these Iowa caucuses. And we're going to take a look at them in alphabetical order, beginning with the candidate over my shoulder, Minnesota Congresswoman Michelle Bachman. Now she's going to come in here with a lot of excitement and according to the latest fundraising numbers, a lot of money as well. But like every one of these other nine candidates, she also has some fatal flaws. And with Michelle Bachman, it really comes down, I think, to two things. Number one, she's a woman. I do think that matters. And if you don't think it does, well, look at the fact we've never had a woman president before in the United States of America. In fact, I would say gender is a much bigger deal than race. Because there are traditional gender roles that people typically see men in and people typically see women in, and those distinctions, those differences, are much older than any ethnic or racial differences that are unique to this culture but maybe didn't exist in others. There's always been defined roles between men and women. And until we actually have a woman who can pull a Margaret Thatcher, sit in the big chair at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, and prove that she can make the tough call, that she can deliver the kill shot, so to speak, or in the case of the Commander-in-Chief, it might be literally, until we see a woman prove that she can do that, I do believe there's lingering doubts with voters about whether or not this is a job necessarily for women. You may disagree with that, you may not like that, Keep in mind, when I'm doing my analysis, I'm not giving my preference, I'm giving simply my analysis. So it's not necessarily what I think will happen or think should happen, but what I think is happening, whether I want it to or not. So I do think Michelle Bachman, being a woman, that is a barrier. She's got to break through that glass ceiling. And I think that also plays into what her other big weakness is between now and the Iowa caucuses, and that is she's got to prove that she is qualified and capable to be the President of the United States. She has a fascinating life history. She also comes in with major firepower on an issue basis. She's a Tea Party champion. She's a pretty renowned social conservative. She makes all the right people, if you're a guy like me, she makes all the right people angry. But just because she's a good ideologue doesn't mean she's a chief executive. And you've got to be able to manage an executive branch with 29,000 appointments, with maybe you'll inherit a White House in January of 2013 at war in Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, and who knows where else between now and then, considering what's already happened on Barack Obama's watch. So B Michelle Bachman, who has really no leadership positions, never really held a leadership position, she's never ran a state, she's never ran a caucus, she's never ran a corporation, uh, she is the head of the Tea Party Caucus in Washington, but to be blunt, she created that caucus, which was very smart politically, by the way, but she created that caucus and then became the leader of a caucus she created. So to me, her fatal flaw, and I think her gender plays into this. You know, we don't often elect congressmen, or women in this case, presidents of the United States, and I don't think we have in this country, in about a century and a half. And, and that's because we typically like people with executive experience. So she's going to come in with a lot of charisma, a lot of firepower, monetarily. Uh, she's going to come in with all the right conservative constituencies behind her, and a lot of name ID. But in the end, she's got to make, to me, the fatal flaw. Imagine a stage, it's Michelle Bachman, the lone woman on a stage with eight other Republican presidential candidates.
Can she prove that she is capable of being the commander-in-chief? Because a lot of times, people will forgive you compromising your values a lot quicker than they'll forgive your inability or incompetence to do the job. And that's what Michelle Bachman's got to prove. In some respects, she's got more advantages than any of the rest of these candidates. However, in one respect, in my, she may very well have the toughest threshold of them all to overcome. And that is, am I qualified to be the President of the United States? Now, if she can cross that threshold, we here at SteveDace.com believe she will be a very formidable opponent come February 6, 2012 in Iowa's First to the Nation caucuses. Thanks for joining us here at SteveDace.com. Check us out on Facebook, Stephen Dace. You can also find us on Twitter at Steve underscore Dace. Email us, Steve at SteveDace.com. God bless.